Hi, so let's talk about protein for a PCOS diet. I'm gonna tell you the answer real quick. About 0.7 to 0.9 grams of protein per a pound of body weight is a good amount of protein for any PCOS diet. So that means you take your body weight in pounds. So let's say, just to make it easy, you weigh 200 pounds and you multiply that times 0.9 to 0.7. That's going to give you like a basic range of what's good for you right now. Um, so there is no one particular diet that is perfect for PCOS. There's no particular like percentage of macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins like in percentages like keto or zone diet that is perfect for every PCOS person. Um, a lot of that is going to have to do with your personal preference, how much you prefer um, maybe eating plants and vegetables and healthy carbs over proteins and healthy fats. Um, so it's really up to you to discover your preference, but as far as a basic number goes to make sure that you're mid hitting your needs, multiplying your body weight times 0.7 to 0.9 will give you a great range. Now, you don't wanna stop just there. And once you get that number, so let's say you weigh 200 pounds, and that means that 140 grams of protein would be like a good baseline for you. You wanna divide that up across multiple meals. Now, if you're eating two meals, then split it into two. If you're eating three or four, if you're counting your snack, let's have some protein in each of those meals. It doesn't have to be perfectly divided across, but you want to be pretty close to having equal amounts throughout the day. And also you want to keep in mind that um, protein isn't like this free pass food. I have a lot of clients who get a little bit confused and think that, well, I ate just a lot of protein today um, and I have a really high protein diet, I should be losing weight. Um, if you're eating more calories overall than you need, even if that's coming from protein, what will happen is your body will break down that protein and turn it into sugars and fats and either burn it as energy or store it. So you may end up maintaining or not losing body weight just by raising your protein levels. In fact, when you look at the studies done on PCOS, there's nothing saying that having a super high protein diet will help you lose weight necessarily. All that to say though, you still should be getting that 0.7 to 0.9 range for a few different reasons. Um, number one is that um, having a good amount of protein in your diet boosts satiety. It, it affects the hormones that make you feel full. And since people with PCOS have a harder time feeling full because there's some dysregulation in our, in our hunger and fullness hormones, making sure you have enough protein can really help. Also, you want to um, have enough protein so that you maintain muscle mass. Whether you're trying to lose weight or not, it is um, beneficial and actually really important for people with PCOS to maintain and even gain muscle mass. And if you happen to be trying to lose weight so you're eating less calories than you need, every pound that you lose, some of your muscle mass may come off. And a good way to fight that is to get adequate amounts of protein like we just talked about and also incorporate some resistance training, which we can talk about in a different video that I'll link to. Also, hormones are need, or excuse me, protein is needed to make your hormones, okay? So if you don't have enough protein coming in through your diet, um, you won't be making your hormones and your neurotransmitters adequately. And that doesn't sound like something that would be good for anybody who's already got a hormonal imbalance like us sisters. So definitely that is just another reason to make sure that you get that 0.7 to 0.9 range in every day. Now you can actually eat more than that. You could go as high as 1 to 1.4 grams of protein per a pound of body weight and it will, um, it could help you feel more full. It could help you, again, maintain that muscle mass a little bit easier and it might give your immune system a boost. If you wanna go into, tr experiment with going into those higher ranges, I would say try it for a while and take some notes. 
Uh, do you feel pretty good after your workouts? Do you feel like your physique is where you want it to be? Do you feel like your cravings, your energy, and your hunger levels are good? If so, that maybe being in that 1 to 1.4 grams per pound of body weight would be really great for you. But again, that's going to be something you need to experiment on a personal level. All right, and uh, two more tips for protein with PCOS. Um, number one, get your protein from a variety of sources. So there are benefits to getting protein from animal sources and there's benefits to getting protein from plant sources. Some of the benefits for getting protein from animal sources is that they have what we call some essential amino acids. Those are basically building blocks of the body that your body cannot make itself. They actually have, you actually have to get them in your diet. So you need to get them either from animal sources um, and then, or fish or eggs or dairy um, or some combinations of um, plant-based sources can give you the right amount of amino acids if you're vegetarian or vegan. If you're not vegetarian or vegan, I would also encourage you to incorporate plant-based protein into your diet. Uh, it's an excellent way to get in protein. So um, chickpeas, lentils, chickpea pasta, which is one of my favorites. Soy uh, in the form of tofu or tempeh is a great source. Um, so you want to incorporate this variety because plant-based um, proteins are associated with a lower risk of inovulatory fertility. We don't know exactly why that is, but it's really uh, interesting that it, women, it seems like in this one study that women that had plant-based protein mixed into their diet um, had lower risk of inovulatory infertility. So that might be something worth just adding in um, just to see if you can get that extra benefit. Also with protein and looking at those mixed sources, you wanna pay attention to the insulin demand an individual protein has on your body. So not just carbs alone affect your insulin resistance, your protein choices can affect your insulin resistance too. So for example, uh, beef and some types of dairy products like cottage cheese, uh, they actually, cause your body to produce more insulin than eating like a slice of white bread. And that's not to say that you can never have beef or never have cottage cheese, but maybe when you're selecting proteins, you might want to go ahead and choose lower, uh, lower insulin demand of proteins like fish and eggs in your plant-based proteins in your poultry. You might want to select those over some of these other higher insulin demand proteins. Now, my final tip is that when you are working out, especially if you're strength training, eat a little bit of protein sometime before your workout and sometime after. That'll help you maximize your muscle gain when you are working out. Okay, so that was a lot of information, but here's the simple, simple, uh, like kind of boil down of it. 0.7 to 0.9 grams of protein per pound of body weight is a great place to start for PCOS. Get your protein from a wide variety of sources and spread it out across all your meals during the day, especially those meals that are around your workouts. And if you are working out a lot, or if you're just interested in doing an experiment, you can go up to one to 1.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight and see how that influences your goals. All right, please, please, please hit subscribe, like, ask me questions below, and check out the notes in the description below if you wanna link to any um, further information on some of the topics that I just brought up here. If you are into living your best life in spite of PCOS, I want you to subscribe now to get no-nonsense, science-based, easy-to-live-by tips.